Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial here, and today in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new 100K Pro Skates from CCM, the Ribcore family, against the previous generation top spec, which was the 80K Skates. We're gonna be talking about what's been changed when we look at the 80Ks versus the 100Ks to show you guys if the upgrade from the 80Ks or perhaps if you're in the 70Ks or any other skate might be worth doing when we look at the brand new 100K Pro Skates. And before we jump into the video, you guys have been doing a phenomenal job of giving us loads of thumbs up and likes before we jump into the video. So maybe Make sure that you do that before the video kicks off and a bunch of you that watch our content aren't subscribed it doesn't sound like it's a big deal but if you could hit the subscribe button or at least consider subscribing it really does help us out it brings more attention to the channel more eyes can see the video which always helps us out but of course before we jump in please make sure that you thumbs up and let's go so starting off with the base of the skate as always and working our way upwards. When we look at the 100K Pros compared to the 80Ks, CCM have upgraded the runners on these boots over here. The same with all of their top spec skates now to feature Steps Black Runners. That's that DLC coated steel that has that chrome-like finish, which has numerous performance benefits, especially when we compare it to the previous generation runners, which was the XS1 Black. Now, while the XS1 Black were black steel, they weren't DLC coated steel. That's a big difference. These runners over here featured an oxidized coated blade, which essentially helped to fend off uh, the wear and tear of the game and maintain edge life a little bit longer than traditional stainless steel. But that black coating did come off easily when it was scratched or chipped or sharpened badly. Now, a big difference between these runners, aside from the actual quality of steel that's used, is also the height of the blade. Now, when we look at Steps runners over here, they are taller, that has that chrome-like finish. The DLC coated, which is that diamond-like coating on the blade, essentially doubles the life of the runner, means that it can really withstand the wear and tear of the game. It holds its edge much longer than black steel and just generally lasts and performs much better. The increased height of the blade means that it's able to add to your agility or your turning radius. You're essentially able to corner and turn much sharper, much tighter, because the steel is slightly taller, it gives you that greater turning radius on the ice. So a lot of benefits straight away when we compare the original XS1 Black to the Step Steel Black feature on the 100K Pros. Now moving up from there, looking at the holders, both of these skates are using CCM's XS holder, which features that dial that allows you to scroll and unlock the blade, pop it out just in a few seconds and pop in another one. There's absolutely no changes with the holders there. So where we're seeing changes over here is the runner, holders of course are the same. Now when we move up into the outsole of these skates, the ATKs over here featured a fully composite outsole which had perforations or holes at the base to allow any excess heat and moisture to exit the skate. The idea behind this particular type of a two-piece skate construction was the boot, the outsole which had numerous glues, clips and pins, and then the holder or the blade holder was then connected to the outsole. This is definitely going to be referred to as the traditional way of manufacturing a skate. Now while that was great, a big reason why we didn't see a one-piece boot introduced when the ATK skates were released is from what I've known from CCM or what I've heard is that creating a one-piece shell, one of the benefits of the one-piece shell as we know from previous videos that I've shot is that stiffness, is that rigidity, but this particular skate was aimed at an agile player, so they didn't want it to be too stiff, but it still needed to be able to offer good lateral stability, good flexibility to allow the player to be able to perform like they would expect in a flexible skate, you could say. A skate that's designed for agility that wasn't as stiff or as rigid as the other two skate families we see from CCM. That's one of the reasons why we saw ATKs still featuring a two-piece construction. Now, when we move over onto the 100K Pros over here from CCM, of course, as you guys have seen from numerous pictures that have been online that have leaked, as well as some of the images that we've posted ourselves while we explain CCM's new fit, the 100K Pros are indeed a full one-piece boot, which is the first time we've ever seen CCM do this with the Ribcore line of skates. The idea behind the Ribcore line of skates was to essentially increase the skater or player's range of motion in these skates. Now what they've done over here with these particular type of one pieces, CCM is referring to this as a one piece boot flex technology. Now what we get with this is unlike what we see in the Jet Speed or the SuperTax range of skates, which are very, very stiff in comparison to the Ribcore range of skates with 100K Pros over here, these skates over here are designed to increase your range of motion and optimize your performance on the ice. Now the way that works, you have the stiff one-piece boot construction that's not as stiff as the Jet Speed range of skates or the SuperTax range of skates. This is a little bit more of a forgiving one-piece construction. The idea behind this construction is it works with CCM's brand new flex motion tongue and their flexible tendon to provide an optimal range of motion in these skates. Players are essentially going to be able to move deeper into their strides and also sharp turns on the ice because of this new flexible tendon and CCM's new flex motion tongue, which we're going to get into a lot more detail in the video. But essentially what we're saying is that 
This new one-piece construction is going to be CCM's most forgiving top-spec one-piece construction. So the stiffest will be the SuperTax, of course, in this case we're going to be looking at the AS3 Pros. Now when we move from the next family we'll be looking at the FT4 Pros, which is going to be the second stiffest one-piece boot construction from CCM. And then the third and most forgiving is going to be CCM's one-piece boot flex technology, which is featured in the brand new 100K Pros. So what are some of the other benefits that you get with a one-piece boot construction? Of course, one of the big ones is going to be the fit. This is going to be a much closer fitting skate to your feet. Aside from, of course, being able to go custom and have the skate fit your feet perfectly, this entire skate is going to be thermoreactive. It's going to be able to contour and wrap to the shape of your foot from all sides. What CCM likes to refer to as a 360 degree fit. So you're going to get a very, very close and comfortable fit with these skates. In addition to that, you also get direct energy transfer with the skate because there isn't an outsole there isn't glue clips and pins in the base of the skate interfering with any movement or motion that you make with your feet directly onto the blade. So those are the two major benefits that you get with that skate. Of course because you remove the glue clips and pins from the skate you also do get a weight reduction in the boot but with these two particular skates over here I will of course show you the weight that you get out of these two boots. What I found is the weight difference between them isn't as significant as I thought and if I was to take a guess that's going to be because of the step steel which is much higher and much taller than what we see with the excess black and of course if you can see from the shot over here the tongue looks much taller much bigger and in addition to that of course this is CCM's excess tongue which we'll touch on later on in the video which has additional components in the toe section to allow you to switch the tongues out. I think some of these new key technologies are going to be some of the reasons why the weight difference between these two skates wasn't as drastic or as dramatic as I thought it would be. So the way I'm going to be looking at the weight of these skates is with the runners off because these ATKs feature the XS Black or the XS1 Black which are significantly shorter than step steel so there's a big difference in the weight of the blade. So this will give us the weight of the skate. Of course I'll weigh the skate blades as well so we see the difference there. So you'll have the total weight of the boot and the blade but I thought this would be a good way to do it. So if we look at the ATKs first, pop them onto the scale. Those come in at 762 grams on the scale. Next up will be the 100K Pros. These are the brand new ones. Those are sitting at 760 grams. Okay, it's just flicked back 759 grams. We'll call it 759 grams as the scales are kind of like flipping back and forth. So there's essentially a three gram difference between the 80Ks and the 100K Pros. Okay, now taking a look at the weight of the runners. First up is Step Steel. I'm actually going to position it like this if it will stand, <laughs> just to be a bit weird. That's coming in at 163 grams on the scale. So if we move that away and we look at the XS1 black blade, this is what you'd find on the ATK. That comes in at 132 grams. So there you go. So if I show you the weight of each of these skates separately, and then of course we add on the weight of the blades, so we get a total weight of the skate and the blade, and we can also see the weight of just the skates or the boots themselves. Hopefully this gives you a nice clear image or nice clear understanding of the differences between the weight of both of these boots. Like I said, I think one of the reasons that the weight difference isn't as drastic as you would expect is although the one-piece boot shell is meant to make the skates lighter, I feel like there's a lot more technology packed into the 100K Pros versus the 80Ks. The tendon guard and the tongue, the tongue has that XS tongue, which has additional components in the bottom of the tongue to be able to allow you to switch it out. So this might have an impact on the weight of the skate itself. And of course, 100K Pros are gonna be significantly stiffer than what we see in the 80Ks. So that means more material inside the actual body of the skate's construction. So that along with the extra materials in the liners of the skate also might play a part in the difference between the weight of these two skates but that's pretty interesting to see. Maybe we'll do this moving forward with all of the skates that we look at. So now when we move up into the quarter package or the actual boot construction of both of these skates, CCM used their flex frame technology with this original 80K skate over here, which featured that two piece construction. And as we've said with this, this features CCM's one piece boot flex technology. Now we've already touched on the benefits there, but some of the other differences that I've seen looking over these skates is when we look at the heel section on the back of the 80Ks over here, it featured a lot of synthetic leathers and additional material, essentially non-performance components in the heel sections of the skate. All of the other non-performance components like around the eyelets and the CCM stitching, that was all removed when we got into the ATK generation of skates, but we still have these synthetic leathers on the back. When we look at the 100K Pros, you can see there's absolutely no non-performance components. The entire skate is just one shell, including the heel section over here. There's no additional materials being stitched or glued or attached onto the rear of the skate. That's just something else that I happen to notice. 
Now, as we move up from there, another big difference that I saw is when we look at the necks of both of these two skates. Of course, this featured that soft synthetic leather-like material along the neck of the skate, which was much, much smaller than what you see on the 100K Pros over here. Now, while this did do a great job of being able to keep you comfortable, you can see that it's not very big. And something else that I noticed is when we look at the 100Ks, you can see that it basically stretches the entire length of the neck of the skate. And another thing that I noticed when you look inside the boot is that the actual comfort pad comes from up within the liners and then wraps around the top of the skate. This is something that I've never, never seen before. It doesn't look like it's that big of a deal, but when you just look from the top of the skate downwards, it looks like it's gonna be incredibly comfortable, and I can confirm these skates are wildly more comfortable than the ATKs. This additional material where the liner essentially extends out of the skate and then wraps around the uh, neck of the skate with the addition of, of some more synthetic-like materials. This is, it's much softer and much more forgiving than what we see in the ATKs. You can see that this is like a, almost like a gloss-like finish, and it is soft, but it's just nowhere near as soft as what we see in the ATKs. The neck of the skate or the comfort pad area of these skates has been wildly, wildly improved. And it's because, of course, this is a one-piece shell, so it is going to be a little bit stiffer than what we see in the ATKs, but it's designed to allow you to get that full range of motion to get nice and deep into your strides and tight turns. And this massive, massive upgrade in the comfort pad area or the neck of the skate kind of goes hand in hand with that. This is a skate that's gonna allow you to perform a lot more aggressively, turn a lot deeper, hopefully because of that flexible construction, allow you to get deeper into your strides and your full leg extensions. So you're gonna be getting a lot more speed and turning a lot more aggressively with this, provided you have the skill. Of course, this is just there to help you optimize that skill. And this upgrade to the neck of the skate is a big, big deal. Super, super comfortable compared to what we saw in the ATK. Moving on to the toe caps or the toe boxes of both of these skates. Now, there isn't really a massive difference in the size, but the 100K Pro's toe box is being referred to as an asymmetrical toe box. When you do look at it, there is a slight difference in the shape of them, uh, but looking at a kind of like a side-on-side -side shot, I can't see a massive difference in the size. But the idea behind the toe cap being asymmetrical is that it's just gonna be a closer fitting toe cap, reducing any unwanted or unnecessary space inside the skate, providing a better fitting skate. So when we look at the differences between these, because of the asymmetrical design, the new toe cap on the 100K Pros should feature less negative space inside the skate than the original toe cap on the ATK skates. Looking at both of the tongues on these skates, starting off with the ATK skates on my left. Now, these particular skates over here featured CCM's Tritec Pro Tongue with molded lace bite protection. That featured that metatarsal guard that you can see featured right in the center of the tongue over here. It offered a good range of motion and of course, lace bite protection, which is always needed. But when we move over onto the brand new tongue featured on the 100K Pro skates from CCM. CCM are calling this their brand new flex motion tongue. Now, this tongue was designed to help players increase their forward flexion on the ice. Remember, these skates are all about agility and a full range of motion, good forward flexion to help you to be able to be quicker and more agile on the ice. In addition to this, this new tongue featured a ribbed design that allows it to flex forward a lot better than the previous design that we saw on the ATK skates. Because this was essentially a solid, not a solid piece, but a piece that was uninterrupted, the metatarsal guard that was featured on the ATK skates. Whereas this brand new rib design, ribbed, I'm really trying to avoid any jokes over here, but bear with me guys. This brand new rib design on the 100K Pro skates allows the tongue to flex forward while still allowing it to offer you the level of protection against lace bite and slashes and anything else that you can imagine happening on the ice that you would expect from an elite level line of skates. But this particular design and this particular tongue is geared towards allowing players to get deeper into their strides, deeper into their turns, hopefully allowing the player to be much more agile on the ice. And another major upgrade on the 100K Pros is that this features CCM's excess tongue. Now, of course, the tongue that's featured on these skates when you pick them up is gonna be the brand new Flex Motion tongue, but if you wanted to replace them with a tongue that has much more protection and also D3O material inside it, you can do that. So if you wanted to increase the volume of the skates by changing the tongue or decrease the volume of the skates by switching out the tongues, you can do that. So another big upgrade there. From there, that brings us nicely onto the back of both of these skates, looking at the tendon guards. Now, one thing you might have noticed about these two skates when they're side by side or nose to nose, the kind of like angle that the tendon guard sat in on the ATK skates was quite aggressive. It's quite at a forward pitch compared to what we see in the 100Ks, which is much more kind of straight and upright. In addition to this, the tendon on the 100Ks is also a little bit more narrow than what we see on the ATK skates, but the biggest advantage over here is gonna be the 100K skates tendon is flexible. If I just turn the skate to the side so you can see the amount of flex that you get from this tendon, it's so much more flexible than what you would get from the ATK skates, which was essentially a fixed tendon. Now, it's, you could try and flex this tendon, but it's, it's not something that I'd 
really suggest doing in case it snapped because or broke because this particular design of a tendon wasn't designed to be flexed. With the tendon on the 100K Pro Skates, it's all about increasing or maximizing on your range of motion on the ice, optimizing that performance, allowing the player to get deeper into their turns, into their strides, hopefully aiding you in your ability to turn more aggressively, skate faster, and be more agile on the ice. And a flexible tendon is there to support that particular type of skater or player on the ice. Now taking a very quick look at the liners of both of these skates, when we look at the 80k skates, these featured CCM's Total Drive Pro Plus liners, which had the dual abrasion protection pads, which was that synthetic-like material along the sides or the highway areas of the skates to help the skates liners hopefully last the life length of these skates. And of course it featured the high performance moisture wicking layers or materials inside the skates, liners that you'd expect to see from an elite level skate. Now when we look at the 100k pros, this features CCM's Total Dry Comfort liners. Now the major difference that I picked up on just touching them is that the original liners on the 80k feel very soft and quite spongy, but when you feel the liners in the 80k skates, they're incredibly soft and comfortable, but they feel a little bit more dense. I hope this means that they're gonna last longer than what we saw in the 80Ks, but aside from that, I do have to mention they are much more comfortable than what we saw in the 80Ks. They just felt like they hug your ankle bones and the rest of your foot much better inside the skates. And because they're a little bit more dense, it feels like you have a lot better lock inside them. Of course, they're high performance materials, so you can expect them to be able to wick away any moisture inside the skate through the perforation on the bottom. It's gonna have essentially all of the same features as what we saw in the 80Ks, but I just felt from touching them and putting them on that they were more dense. They wrapped around my ankle bone, my foot, and locked it in a lot better than what I saw with the 80k skates. They also seem to have done away with the abrasion pads which featured those synthetic like materials along the high wear areas of the skates. So I suspect these new liners are gonna just be able to do that with the liner and don't require the addition of those synthetic like materials to help beef them up. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video when we looked at the neck of the skate, the liners essentially stretch the whole way to the top and then wrap around the neck of the skates, meaning that the comfort pads in these skates are much, much more comfortable than any other comfort pads that I've seen from pretty much any other skate currently on the market. I've seen a few comments asking why we don't look at the footbeds in these skates anymore. If I don't talk about the footbeds, it's essentially because there's no major upgrades there. They're either identical or it's just a simple piece of foam um, footbed which you'd see in any skate pretty much at any level. And that's exactly what we have in the 80Ks and the 100K Pros. They're essentially the same footbed. There's no major differences, just a very, very thin piece of foam. As always guys, a big thank you for watching the video all the way to the end and a big thank you to CCM for making this video possible by providing us with the materials and the skates to be able to create this video for you guys. This has probably been one of the most requested skate videos that I've seen when we look at comments and inbox messages that we get on Instagram and Facebook, so I'm glad that I could finally bring this video to yourselves. Make sure that you give the video a thumbs up. Of course, if you're looking for where to purchase these skates worldwide, whether you're in the UK or in North America, links will be down below in the video description to the best places that you can go to pick these skates up. Big thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.